Welcome to the City Council meeting for the uh, Monday, March 11th. I'd like to call the meeting to order and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Birchill? Here. District 1 Morset? Here. District 2 Yaku? Here. District 3 Bernard? Here. District 4 T. Winkle? Here. District 5 Hoggett is excused. District 6 Banslow? Here. This time of our meeting, we take comments and suggestions from citizens present on any items that are not on the agenda. So, is there any citizens present that would like to address the council? Time. Is there anyone here that would like to talk, speak to the council about any item that's not on the agenda? If not, we'll move on to consent agenda. To approve the regular meeting minutes of February 25th, 2013. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $299,209.55. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of six regular operator's licenses for the period March 12, 2013 to June 30, 2014. Additional operator license information is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the appointment of Chow Lin Tan as the agent for Dragon Pearls Beer and Wine license contingent on the surrender of the current license and payment of any outstanding debt that is owed to the city. To place on file the quarterly reports of the Parks and Public Works Director, the February 26, 2013 minutes of the Community Access Board, and the March 1, 2013 minutes of the Ad Hoc Deer Management Committee. That is all. Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Winkle? T. Winkle? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Morset? Yes. Yakub? Yes. Banslow? Yes. Okay, first item on the agenda is application of Bernie Rodell at 2420 Flax Glove Circle for a conditional use permit to reduce the rear yard setback per municipal code 20, 2055-22B to permit an addition of six feet and an enclosure on the existing rear porch. Mr. Darnold. Good evening. Now the application by Bernie Rodell utilizes a conditional use permit approval to request a waiver or reduction of a rear or side yard setback uh, for townhomes, also commercial developments allowed to use this provision. The, uh, basically what Mr. and Mrs. Rodell want to do is to add additional six feet to their existing porch and close it. Um, this is a little bit different uh, consideration in the fact that the city stormwater pond is immediately to the west of there so it's open space and there's about 150 feet from where the back of this additional structure uh, to the uh, residential development to the west planning commission recommends uh, approval of the application for a conditional use permit as submitted by bernie rodell 2420 foxglove circle to reduce the setback to 19 feet to allow extension and a closure of the existing rear porch uh, this is Rodell is here tonight to answer any questions. Uh, we did not have any comments at the uh, public hearing or held by the Planning Commission. I don't know if there's anybody from the public that would like to make any comments in regard to the application by Mr. Rodell. Are there any questions I can answer? I'll move for approval. A second. Any, in the, I don't know if you mentioned it, it passed uh, 6 in planning? Correct. I'll give you time to take a look. If you have any questions, we're certainly well. I think uh, the positive of this, it opens up, there's no neighbors that uh, it affects. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a final plat of for Red Cedar Canyon townhomes south 66 townhome units eight seven unit structures and two five unit structures north of hanley road and east of o'neill road hans hagen homes um, planning commission recommends approval of the final plat of red cedar canyon townhomes south as presented by hans hagen 
if the condition at the utilities and private streets are inspected and the plat will not be allowed to be filed until a development agreement is executed. Uh, this plat or preliminary plat uh, amendment to the conditional use permit for the master plan for planned residential development of, of Red Cedar Canyon was approved uh, in the mid about 2005, 2006. Uh, is, uh, before filing the plat uh, or having a plat approved, they installed private streets and also the utilities. Uh, so they've been sitting idle for a period. That's the reason uh, the city staff is recommending that the streets and the utilities be reinspected to make sure. And also the developers on board with that also he understands the importance of having those reinspected. Um, again, this, uh, these structures would be very similar to the townhomes, uh, just uh, north and northeast of, of the, um, uh, in the Red Cedar Canyon. So Planning Commission recommends approval. Mr. John Rask, Vice President for Hans Hagen Homes, is here tonight to answer any questions. Just, to, I had one that I forgot on planning. Are we okay on our street lights? Do we have enough street lights there? Uh, well, we've never had an issue or problem. I know okay. in Heritage Greens, we're still trying to address some, but not in this particular not neighborhood. In this, okay, thank you. Uh, I move for approval. Is there a second? A second. Questions? Comments? I just want to make a statement for since it's District 2 and my neighborhood. I did ask that Plan Commission, because it's apartments, and, and Red Cedar Canyon hasn't had apartments, and I'm sure there's going to might be some hesitation when they when residents of that neighborhood hear about that and I, I did get clarification from Mr. Rask that they will be it's going to be a separate association so it's be a fourth association and it'll be maintained by Hans Hagen Homes and I think that's a benefit not as, um, when you have apartments you know it's going to be maintained by the developer so which is why I was in favor okay with the development will the association remain under the developer forever that's how uh, John? Unless they sold it. <laughs> well, I mean, often associations yep. are turned over once at a certain right. level. There's is. one right. owner of this project. Okay. Yes, that's correct, uh, Mr. Mayor. There, there will be uh, uh, one owner of the 66 units, so that portion of it will remain uh, under Hans Hagen Homes' jurisdiction as the owner uh, manager of, of the 66 units, just like a normal association acts. We do the grounds the exterior maintenance of the buildings. Um, the overall association has already been turned over and that's a different entity. So it's a separate association from who maintains this particular, these particular units. So. Sorry to interrupt. Are these apartments or are they townhomes that are owned? Yeah, they're very similar to the row townhomes built out there. So they are individual units. They're designed as townhomes, not as a multi-story apartment building. So they're not rental units. They, uh, they rented. will be rented, will be correct. Rented. Um, uh, but they are built and constructed to the same standards as a, as a residential townhome. They sit on an individual lot with individual utilities, and they're the, the road-type townhomes that are out there today. So, Is there an option to buy one, though? No, there, there won't be. And okay. the money mainly has to do with financing of yeah. them, because they'll be financed as one, one uh, project, yeah. and you can't just piece them out so they would be held under common ownership. Any other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Denny. Uh, consideration of continuation of grant program using tax revenues, room tax revenues. Um, any questions, uh, Neil? Do you have uh, any comments on the? Uh, no, the recommendation the from the committee would have would have been to uh, to continue the program, albeit unfunded, for 2013. Uh, I think there would be further discussion at a future meeting on utilization of the funds. At the end of 2012, we had a carryover balance of the city portion of funds of 23,000. 600 some dollars and are anticipating that that increase uh, assuming that the revenues come in as scheduled uh, That balance would increase to about 26 6 uh, Next year, so those funds would be available uh, for uh, Other municipal uses or for a grant program potentially in 2014 
So what finance on a split vote of three to one uh, recommended we keep the grant program. Um, again, uh, as a maybe a, if, if we don't get any requests again next year, take a look at it again. But we will bring back to the full council um, recommendations on what we should do with the remaining balances. We'll have that as a separate item. So we were kind of doing both of them at once and now we will separate them. So the only thing we have tonight is whether or not we want to continue the grant program. When is the deadline? Has that passed? There is no deadline. If, if money is put into the fund, then the uh, deadline is established. And okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought it sounded as if no one had applied this year. I think that's true. But the reality is we didn't fund it. Right. Right. That's why no one applied. So in my mind, the bigger question is, are we going to choose to fund it next year? And then will people apply? If you look on the, the back pages here, this was in 2012, what we had. And it was whatever, it was $3,000 was set aside. Um, we did put a notice in the paper and on the website, and we just received the two applications. But like I said, this year there's no money being proposed to be funded, so we didn't set up the program. The 2013 year, because I thought we did fund hot air fare. We put that well. up into the... Out of regular, out of the... Um, tourism. tourism and beautification. Right. right. But last year that money came out of the grant, the grant program. program. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we moved it up to right. tourism. Correct. Right. So in the future, if money's put into the grant program, we would use a similar type form and do the same notifications. And we'll bring that back next meeting to see whether or not we want to put anything in there mm -hmm. or what requests we may or may not have or whether we use it for any other city purpose. Well, if we have the grant mud? program and nobody applies for it and we have excess funding, it, we can then use it for... We can use it whether we have a grant program or not. we only need not. to use a certain percentage. In my opinion, we can use it for whatever we want. But just to clarify, we've chosen not to fund it for 2013. Correct. So there's no point in anyone applying. And I'm just in favor of leaving it there in case in the future we do want to open it back up and put... 5,000 in there and sure. let some different organizations or if there's a special event coming up give them an opportunity to apply for it right now based on what we project there should be another three thousand dollars coming in that's correct so for the next year again we don't know how many people are going to stay in our hotels and those kinds of things so I don't have a problem leaving it in place I just thought it was silly to have the same two people two organizations applying every year and just going through all that I you agree. Know, in the past, there have been other As we discussed, the first couple of years, I think right. the first year we had seven, the second year we had five, and then right. the last few years it's been... But the option to leave it there in case, like Lori says, if there's like Pee Wee International again or something like that where something is coming into Hudson that's going to benefit us. I'm okay with that. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we keep the grant program in place. Okay. I'll second it. Discussions? Any more discussion on that item? Anybody want to say anything? I second it. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. Uh, item five, 2013 mooring fees. Mr. Zuli. Uh, currently, the uh, mooring fees for 2013 have not been established. Um, uh, the mooring applications were due first, so it's uh, imperative that we get uh, these fees established. Um, the fees, uh, it, is, uh, it was our recommendation that we keep the fees the same as we have uh, in, since 2009. They've been uh, a consistent uh, fee. Uh, we have kept uh, all the other park user fees uh, consistent, uh, the same, have remained the same uh, from 2012 to 2013. So we recommend that uh, to keep the Mooring fees the same for 2013, 560 dollars. 
And beyond that, Tom, you said that the fees are more than covering. At this point, uh, something that we'd really like to uh, break down and um, look at maybe a little bit closer next year. But currently, we feel that we're um, all our expenses are being covered. Okay. So, so you didn't do a breakdown this year, though. You're just it, it's. We they have been broke down prior to this. Educational guests, or you had it broke down. Yeah. You're looking at more detail, like for personnel costs. At the, at so. the finance committee, he estimated his expenses at fifteen thousand four eighty on a breakdown that he had. And we bring in how much from it? Twenty eight thousand four. Twenty seven four four. But uh, for example, with late front pie, a certain percentage is allocated to moorings, whereas what we're talking about is adding a code to the payroll, so we can say exactly how many hours were spent on it, so we have a, more detail on what the exact costs are. Hmm. I'll make a motion to keep the 2013 mooring fee at $560. I'll second that. Okay. Comments? So nothing Questions? Has, nothing has increased in costs in, since 2009? I mean, I would think there had to be increase in got between gas and asphalt and everything that we do with these fees. I understand that we've kept other park fees the same, and I'm just... Of course, and all costs are probably relatively steady because of the change in how we're funding the retirement. But I don't know about the rest. But even, I guess even if they did go up, we still, ha it seems, from the numbers you've... I believe we shared, have, yes. There's still a surplus, so... And we don't know what it is relative to other um, communities? Or where we sit? No. Uh, I don't have a clear uh, picture in that. We tried to get a few of the other uh, mooring spots uh, a few weeks ago, and most of them are closed. Um, I don't have a really clear picture on that. Statutorily, we can only, was it, Catherine, reasonable costs? Is that what the language is? Reasonable in relation to the service provided. Okay. The, the mooring people do purchase their own um, anchoring system. Uh, we do, I think last year we did purchase some of the marking buoy, buoys on the exterior of the mooring area. Um, every, you know, we have to replo replace those every few years. Uh, last year was just a couple. Uh, mostly administrative this year, is, it's, if we kept track of that, it'd be very costly. We have, we have a lot of time in this mooring um, issue with this uh, controversy and things like that. So. So are, are we, we're statutory, we're restricted because it's a public? Well, the statute's pretty generic, and it's relative, well, it's about five years old. It's only been interpreted in two cases, and they applied it to regulatory type fees, building inspection fees for administration of the building code. Okay. This is a little bit different in that it's not something that someone needs to participate in, the city is offering a place to moor boats and someone can choose whether or not to um, utilize the city's service. So it's different from other regulatory type fees. And I would think, although there's no case law on it, that that aspect of it could be taken into consideration in determining what's reasonable. In other words, there's other places that offer the service. There's private places, there may be other public places. No one's required to moor their boat in Hudson. So we, the statute kind of falls, it kind of falls under the statute. Well, the saying, statute but not just completely. talks about fees, the political subdivision, the fee has to bear a reasonable relationship to the service. Now, I, Tom mentioned at finance that the Army Corps reviews the fees. All I know is they, I'm not familiar with that, but we've had these fees in place, so if they do, they must think they're reasonable. So it's left up to interpretation and how far you want to litigate it. And how much is a slip in the? We don't, I don't have that information. The slip in the marina? Yeah. Those are owned. I know, I'm just curious how much, I'm. So much of what? How much is a slip in the marina? I'm just curious. I'm sure it'd be four or five thousand dollars per year, but that's just my guess. Okay. Well, Tom, I would I hope you would do your due diligence in the summer to find out uh, the comparisons around 
you know, some of the cities I've mentioned, including, you know, the lakes and Minneapolis, St. Paul. How long is this? Uh, is this a one year? Yep. Right? Um, it's one year. The other thing, too, Randy, follow up would be to what services they offer versus okay. what services we offer to make sure it's yeah. apples and apples. Yeah, good point. Okay, any other comments or questions? If I'm not mistaken, we raised this fee. 2009. 2009. Yeah, it was shortly after I came on. Yep. What was it? I think it was 500. I, my memory might be off a little bit, but it was a, it was a noticeable increase. Okay. So it's, this is, this is going to get reviewed again next year. It's so one year. Correct. And if Tom does his research over the summer, we'll see where we stand as far as how we're charging. Okay. So Tom, you said that all but four of the current um, leasers, leases had renewed. As, as of last, last middle of last week, uh, all but four had put their application in. Okay. Um, and then there was a few uh, people, alternates, that applied also. Okay. So, I mean, I think that's got to be taken into consideration, too. We're not being swamped with applications. You know, there's some people every year that maybe don't renew and a few more new ones <coughs> that come on. Is this still in the order that, did we change the order yet of the application process, or is that in public work still? Or is it not even being discussed? Well, I think we have changed that, haven't we, Tom? Not yet, as far as uh, should be current, city the priority. current people get first chance, and then it's city residents. Um, school district. School district. School district. Then and it then goes it to goes Washington, Washington County. County and then St. Croix County. Are we going to work on flip-flopping that? <laughs> What's that? We're straying from the fee issue. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. But I was just asking because she had said how the What was the contract issue? Well, we'll get to that. Any other comments or questions anyone have? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. All right. Don't go away. <laughs> uh, First item on the agenda of public works is dinghy storage and access to boat mooring area. Um, some questions that we want to talk about. Before we even talk, yep. I'm, I'd like to make a request for, to postpone this until we have full council here. I'm okay. gonna, I'll make a motion to postpone until we have full council. I think it's a, it's been a very you know, back and forth discussion, and I think the council should be here. I'll second. All right, we got a motion and a second. Um, and how can we predict when that I was just going to say the 25th? I mean, <laughs> well, let's just hang on a second. Is everybody going to be here the 25th? Rich, you, you're planning, yep. Kurt? As far as I know. Okay. So I guess the only person we'd have to check with is John. John. Okay. Everyone else going to be here the 25th? Okay. Oh, go ahead, Lori. Well, I mean, that's fine. You know, we want to bring this forward from Public Works. I know I made, I changed, you know, plans to be out of town so I could be here tonight because I think it's an important issue and the mooring people need an answer. One of the biggest reasons we need to solve this is we want to continue having the boats down on Lakefront Park. It's an asset to the city. It brings in revenue. And quite frankly, this has taken an inordinate amount of Tom Zuli's time and our public work staff. It's time to get this resolved. And, you know, I guess one thing that this is gonna take is some recognition of the fact that it is an issue very separate and very different from the first street dock issue. And if there's not, if there's not agreement there, we're not gonna be able to go anywhere, I get that. But it strikes me and Kurt, there were only two of us at the public works meeting, you know, there's a relatively simple solution. I think Tom agrees, um, a relatively low cost idea, but that's gonna keep the, uh, the, the dike road um, looking nicer, uniform dinghies, you know, at designated places um, set by the city, uniform sizes, and, you know, cost-wise, we're looking at nothing compared to what's come out of 
some of the ideas that the park board has put forward. I applaud their efforts, but the money's not there. Okay. And we need to come up with a solution. So this is what came forth out of Public Works. You know, it needs a little more work, but I wanted the concept to come forward so we could at least discuss it. Okay. And Tom, feel free to add whatever you'd like. Well, we have a motion and a, uh, if you want to speak to the motion and the second to uh, delay it, I guess we talk about that first. And then we can go back to... Um, so we can't present it? I mean, we can delay a vote, but are you saying we can't even present what's come out of our committee? Well, that's, Gosh. I think... That's up to whether or not... Yeah, what the motion was to, I, I assume, we, not Well, if we're going to postpone it... it why would we sit? Yeah, you'd you want know what? Quite, if you want to know, quite frankly, I'm insulted as what came out of committee, because there's a plain as day motion out there that says these are not going to be on the dike road, and that hasn't changed. And every time it's coming out of committee, whether it's park and now public works, the idea is to go back on the dike road. So yes, I'm quite frankly insulted, but I also think it is an important issue where it should be. Everyone should be here. So if you want to have discussion, I'm not going to stop discussion, but okay. I don't. I can't believe that after we've just, after it was just said how much time is taken and how much time we've taken of staff and how much time we've taken of this, we, we come back to the dike, having it back on the dike road when the motion was very clear and it passed 4-2, it wasn't a split vote, that the dinghies would not be on the dike road, that we needed to find a solution outside of the dike road. So that's, I'm, very, I'm a little frustrated in that. So. And I didn't have the opportunity to be at that meeting because of personal issues. And quite frankly, I want more time to look at it. I'm also irritated at the fact that the same people that uh, kind of created this problem now are trying to kind of push this along a little faster without any thought. It is, to my mind, and you're not going to change it, directly germane to the first street problem. Okay. Well, I voted you know, to take them off the dike roads, but I still have an open mind in regards to trying to solve the problem. And if the dike road is one of the solutions, I'm not totally opposed to that uh, because of the current situation. Uh, I just haven't seen any other uh, options that look reasonable. So I, I did vote to take them off the dike road, but it doesn't mean I'm totally 100% against it. And I would reconsider that uh, unless I see something else coming forward. We need a solution for the mooring people. Um, I think we have an obligation to do that. And if the dike roads is the only way to do it, um, I would go back and say, I'm okay with that. We could close it, privatize it. Those options We're, haven't been talked about. Yep. <laughs> We're getting far from, from yeah, what? The We're discussing this issue. Well, I think you need to make a decision on your As to whether we're going to motion. Postpone. Part of the reason for the motion is to have full council. If you have your discussion today, full council won't have the benefit of it. I, I guess if, if I knew we were going to have 100% attendance at the next meeting, I would probably be okay with postponing it, but I don't know that today. And postponing it. Somebody, something could come up where somebody yeah. is I recognize that. Postponing it could tonight, just be. Which is why I changed my plans yeah, to be yeah. here. So. Postponing could be just useless for us. And we're not going to be any further ahead on March 25th than we are tonight. And I don't know that delaying it is going to help us all. It's March 11th. You know what? That's fine. I'll pull back my motion to postpone. I don't have a problem with that. But I also think there's my other problem is that the motion was clear that dinghies aren't supposed to be on a dike road and here we have something that's against a past motion so I don't even know how we how we entertain it isn't it an ordinance now no the way to entertain it is you would need to suspend the rules your motion was back in September Correct. and it did include I looked at both motions it did include removing you know looking at alternate solutions removing them from the dike road that's what passed. That's what it? was adopted in September. Okay. And the time for reconsidering that, although it's difficult to apply it to this situation because um, that was the end of the season. But the time under the rules is either that meeting or the next meeting. That's already passed. So the way to bring it forward procedurally under the council rules is to have a motion to suspend the rules. And for that, you need a two-thirds vote. 
So if we have a motion to suspend the rules and it doesn't pass, we're done. We can't do it now. Is you can't right? do it now. Um, the uh, There isn't anything in the rules that I see that would keep someone from bringing it up again, to, but you'd still have to suspend the rules. Because of the fact it's more than one meeting after what our- Right, under reconsideration, once something's, uh, once a reconsideration motion is lost, you can't bring it up again, but that's six not- six months, right? Is it six months? Um, no, it's just done. Um, well, but then how do we ever change ordinances? Well, of course we just, I think you it's amend six them, yeah. yeah. There's various places in the zoning code, like if you apply for a permit or a rezoning, you can't just reapply with an X number okay. of months. But under the council rules, there is no time period on the reconsideration. The fact of the matter is, though, this is a council issue. It's under the council's authority to decide. And so the council needs to be able to deal with it. If someone tries to suspend the rules again and it still fails with the full council, then I would conclude that this no council support. doesn't want to look at that issue. That doesn't mean a year from now you couldn't look at it again. You have to have some common sense in interpreting and applying the rules of procedure. But at this point, you do have a motion that was adopted. You do have a procedure for reconsideration that wasn't you know, used. And so I think the appropriate thing procedurally is a motion to suspend. If you can, like I said, if you can't get that kind of willingness, you know, four votes when you have a full council, then I think that's your answer, at least for the time being, on storing the dinghies on the dike road. Politically, that's your, the council as it sits now it is not willing to look at it again. Okay, how do you feel about that, ladies and gentlemen? Well, I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. Okay, I'll second that. All right. Do we have to vote on the first motion? Before I pulled that. Oh, oh, she, she I withdrew it because. Because. So then it. Was we a roll call, call vote? Yep. Okay, roll call vote <laughs> to suspend the rules. Bernard? Yes. Morset? No. Yaku? No. Banslow? Yes. T. Winkle? Yes. Motion fails. Because we need four, right? Right. Okay. So, can we bring it back next meeting? I think you could go through the same procedure. We're going to have to procedure. get to yeah. yep. mm -hmm. And I'd just like to go on the record saying we have not solved this problem at all. We, we said we were gonna take the winter to look at it. We looked at several very expensive options, none of which make sense. We've not solved the problem. It continues to be a time drain on public works department. And frankly, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we're not able to get some resolution to this. I think there was resolution. What, what is it? Resolution and I'm disappointed that we would keep coming back to the Dyke Road situation when we, when we know it's a public road. So I'm... That's Can I ask what the resolution was? Other I than thought taking the Jarvis the dock out? situation would have been a very good resolution. It would have been, I thought it was a great idea. So yes, I don't say no when I don't have another idea that I think is good, and I think that was a good idea. If I, can't, if I thought there was no good solutions in front of us, I'd reconsider, but that was a good solution. And we had the mooring group tell us it wasn't workable. And they them. didn't like one type of stair, and they didn't want another type of stair, and they didn't want this type of stair. We are the council. We need but to figure out. They are the out, ones that have to use it. You know what? I get that. But we're talking about 48 moors, 15 that live in the city, and we have already established that we're not going to have private property on public roads, public whatever, private on public. This is private on public. I mentioned this. And I don't care if you want to say it separate from the dock issue or not. I was very clear at the dock issue that we are going to go down this road through the whole river. Nobody stood up then to, to say, you know, I, I gave in on the dock issue when I felt like, you know what, that was the best option. I'm not, I'm not, not that I'm stubborn and voted no all the way through. 
I ended up voting in favor of removing the docks, but then I feel that I'm the one person staying consistent. I removed the docks, and I think the dinghy shouldn't be on a dike road either then. Same principle. Okay. I think Mr. Mayor. Yes. May I just, for the sake of the public record, share what this plan was, just the specifics of it very briefly, sure. Sure. Um, just so it's out there. Um, so the plan was to install um, several two to three foot posts, um, you know, in designated areas on the dike road. Um, each would accommodate up to 10 dinghies. The total cost estimate for the project is um, $12,000. It would come from the Park Improvement Fund, which has a balance of $65,000. Um, the city would specify the dinghy size and color. Um, they could be no more than 55 inches wide, no longer than 10 feet in length. Um, uh, like I said, color was going to be designated as cream or white. Um, the mooring policy would be updated to include the fact um, that they were each allowed one dinghy and that um, the city was going to be held harmless. They were going to use them at their own risk. If they felt like it wasn't safe, they weren't required to use them. And then we were going to obtain um, necessary permits from the DNR, Corps of Engineers, and Plan Commission if necessary. Um, that was our plan. And I'd just like to say that sounds pretty reasonable for the First Street Dock residents. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on that? Uh, we'll bring it back for the next committee to, when we, if we have a full, we'll put it back on and we'll see if, yeah, I guess it'll be, works. yep. See if Mr. Hoggett will, how, if we need four votes. And can I ask the question, Catherine? I mean, is there any, I, I think it just, it needs to be asked because the public's gonna wonder. Mm -hmm. We had two people from council recuse themselves earlier from the first street issue. And there seems to be disagreement as to whether or not these issues are related or not. I mean, well, I've given my opinion that they're different. Mm -hmm. And I stated that on the record at the last council meeting. I can, I don't have a problem putting that in writing if the council would like further explanation on why they're different, in my opinion. Um, other than that, uh, that would be an issue, in my opinion, it would be an issue for the two people who recuse themselves, whether or not they feel there's a conflict of interest on the dinghy issue. Would that be a... Well, to the extent... I can't issues. evaluate the reasoning no. they're using to tie them to the First Street uh, yeah. issue. And so I, I think you're asking, is there a conflict of interest because they recuse themselves I mean, I think from are the First wonder. Street issue? I don't know the reason for, the basis for them saying why these are the same. Um, it conflicts with my opinion, but they may have some basis for it. With regard to conflicts of interest, the finance, the city has its own conflict of interest ordinance, and um, it prohibits personal or financial interest in matters that come before the council. There's also a state uh, um, conflict of interest ethics statute for local government officials. It's up to the, each official to review the the law the ordinance and the law that applies and make a decision it's not a council decision except to the extent that the city has adopted a procedure whereby someone can file a complaint if they believe that someone has violated the city ethics policy ordinance and that comes to the finance committee okay so that's that the clear procedure. as much mm -hmm. all right All right, uh, communications uh, from the mayor and recommendations. Uh, Devin and I re attended a meeting Monday? Last, last Monday. Monday in River Falls with River Falls, Ellsworth, Pierce County, St. Croix County, Prescott, Prescott Village of Ellsworth, and uh, how we can collaborate and work together and hopefully try and save some uh, resources and utilization of uh, funds. And I think Equipment, a, personnel, yep. you know, programs. I think there was a lot of, uh, uh, between counties, particularly the two counties, utilizing some of the stuff, some buying programs. And, and they talked about 911 and the fact that River Falls overlaps. And Yep. So we're trying to, we're working on that. Um, 
we've been, I don't know if Danny is still here, we've been getting lots of phone calls again. I think things are starting to pick up again in our industrial area. Things are kind of busy, not gonna tell you who, but things are starting to get excited again. So I think there's some things that are, that are going on that it'll be, it'll be good, good news. Um, city administrator, anything? No, nothing. City attorney? No. Any council person would like to make any comments? If not, if we could have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.